Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Game Core. This is the one and only gaming podcast that you will ever need. I am your host once again. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me, always excited to do this show, is Chad Porto. How are you, sir? You can you can talk your shit all you want, my friend. It's fucking 12, 10 in the morning, and I'm ready for bed. Well, first of all, I was being facetious, so yes, wasn't really wasn't really hence, a heartfelt thing. So, hence the response, D bag. It's fucking late. Uh, can't help that. I mean, it's. I mean, I could have done it at like eleven thirty, but I don't know how things are with you. So, oh, that wouldn't. Have been. Matt, Matt, we're talking about the difference of like 30 minutes. I was tired at 8.40. That long of a day, huh? Yeah. I, f- fuck. <laughs> we have this conversation every well, I don't know what you week. did all day, man. I don't, ta- I, I, don't ta- I don't talk to you every day, so I don't know what you do all day long. Work. <laughs> Which is something that I can't say about this fucking game you picked. Jesus Christ, lag time and frame rate. Like, I bitch about that shit. Like, people who bitch about that, I bitch about that all the time. Like, really? Like, you're playing on, like, a kajillion dollar console and you're complaining about a slight delay that you barely notice? Oh, no, you noticed it this time. <laughs> Fucking everything slowed down to a crawl. Well, this is uh, this, this it's always like I don't I don't remember it always being like that with arcade ports to Super Nintendo either because I the tur- the port of Turtles in Time the port of Turtles in Time didn't run slower than the original arcade did it or was it slower? I don't know about the port, um, like the more recent port, but I can tell you the original one was was laggy as fuck. Okay, so this is this is a fairly common thing then. Okay, especially with Konami games. <laughs> Cut Nami. I think that I think it port was also ported to the Genesis, if I believe. Like this this one was, but I think that version was actually even like worse in terms of design. It was like wasn't even close to what the original one was. This one's at least slightly closer. I mean Might as well just get into it. So first and foremost, um it's rudimentary. Like, like this is what nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety. This one's ninety. I want to say ninety two or ninety three. Okay. This one is. So, like, you're gonna get the same stock characters, same stock levels. It, it's not that mm. dynamic, but you, you really can't, you know, harp on it too hard for the villains, right? Like, you knew what you were gonna. Limited, li- limited villain types. Mm-hmm. The heroes, however, are f- fucking atrocious. So <laughs> you got fucking Billy, you got Bob, you got Billy Joel Bob, you got Bob Jilly Bull Bull Bo. And I'm just like, who the fuck named these assholes? Somebody I'm who didn't Steve. know anything past the letter B, apparently. <laughs> um, Billy. I'm Bob. I'm Kamakakakakacho. What? We went, we oh, went, that'd be interesting. <laughs> we, went, we went directly into the, the fuck category for Kamacho or K- whatever his name is, Kamachio. But they went super fucking racist with the Mexican. So, like, throughout the levels, you can, oh, like, no go, you can go into, like, all the little, like, places and whatnot. I think mm. that the blue guy, I think that's Billy. He goes and gets laid. You know, Steve gets the money. I don't know what Bob does. Bob probably just gets punched in the face because he's a cunt. Camacho, when he goes <laughs> in, gets drunk. And he doesn't just get drunk. He gets drunk on tequila. That's some hardcore oh racism right there. Well, maybe not racism. Bigotry, definitely. <laughs> Definitely heavy on the stereotype. That's oh, yeah. Sure. We, we definitely scared in, steered into the racial uh, stereotypes on that one, my friend. 
And like when he showed up on the like the uh, <laughs> pregame video, like the music went straight like Mexican mariachi, and I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> God, I'm not even someone who believed in white guilt, but even I have white guilt over that. <laughs> God damn. Is or is this on like the same level as like how bad Mar- like racist Mario is? Oh no. Is Mario's the same even level? worse. Because okay. Mario is an entire franchise that's prevailed for nearly 40 years mocking, belittling and minimizing the Italian experience through the lens of Japanese eyes. So yeah, that's a lot fucking worse. But this is like At least this is just one game, right? <laughs> th- yeah, this ranks. Like that's that's the that's the standard. This, you know, this, this ranks, it it doesn't meddle, but like you Mm. made it to the Olympics. That in itself is impressive. Yeah. You didn't crack Mm. the top 20, but you know, how many people can say they've ever been to the Olympics? You and about a thousand few other people like that's it. It's like you, you, you and pretty elite company. So yeah, graphics are like, like real fucking rudimentary. Um, color schemes on the heroes are, are nice, but they made the horses different colors. I understand why. It's so you can see them mm. and so you can tell who who's who and all that. So I get it. Um, it's still mm. not that sharp or impressive. And the mm. characters are essentially the same model. So like they had to do the same thing with with you know they had to do the the, the color scheme horses differently because of the fact that they're all the same height, they're all the same width. Or, so like there were certain limitations they obviously had to abide by. So, so I can't really say it's great. Um, I'll give it a. Th- uh, I don't even like the Western aesthetic. I'll give it a three. Uh, uh, I, I, fe- I was about, I was I was feeling a two coming on from you honestly. I was, I was thinking I was, but I also got to you mm. know I got to look at it in, in the lens of ninety one ninety two. You know this wasn't too bad. Except for the fucking racial stereotype with the pink sombrero. Yeah, it's very it's very simplistic in terms of design for sure. It varies much just like, hey, what's the stereotype of the old West? Oh, it's all of this. Okay, we'll just make it one basic layout for everything. That way we just incorporate different colors and everyone will just understand it, make it simplistic. Which is okay if you have somewhat a style to it. But here it's just what's your style? Different colors and one different character who's a big racial stereotype. Like, okay. So yeah, for me it's that's fairly average as well. It's probably a three, I would say, for me as well. So when I booted this up, I thought I pl- started playing the wrong game because mm. immediately I'm like, oh shit, I put on the turtle somehow because the music is fucking turtles music. <laughs> straight it's, up man. it's not even original and then you have the sound effects like the guns are all just and then every guy's like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> did, I, did i swear to god i think this section when uh you remember the part where the bulls are charging at you yeah when when you jump on that i swear to god i think they might have pulled that from the turtles in time western stage itself just at that part alone Probably, which is why I'm giving it a big old fucking one. <laughs> it is fairly, it is fairly generic, man. They're like, how oh, generic can we go? We'll go this far. Yeah, it's not, it's not very special at all. Like everything is very simplistic here, and I don't know if I say it's like super bad, but it's not. I don't think I'm say it's as bad as you. I think I'll go two. All right. Uh, gameplay, it's fucking blah. Like, yeah, you get to ride a horse in, in, in a level or two, and you, you do, like, uh, a first-person banger for, like, a bonus level if you're good enough. Um, <sighs> most of it's the same bullshit, and, like, the villains are only done in three different ways. Mm. So I'm not going to slam it too hard, but I'm not going to give it too much originality. Um, I'll give it a three. I was thinking about a two. But it, I, I, I think about, like, X-Men, the arcade game. And I, and I mm-hmm. ask myself, like, what would I give that? Probably a three or a four. Same bullshit here, right? So Yeah, it seems, seems pretty much on the same wavelength as that, I would say. So I'll give it a three. It's very rudimentary, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, the the only thing I would say that changes it up even a little bit is the different, like sometimes the different guns. I think there's like one different gun that you can get in here, and I think it's the Bob dude or whatever. He gets a, a shotgun that fires like a spread shot, but other than that, there's not that much in terms of variety. And I think the real bitch of this game too is that see back see this being in the arcade, this was a real like tap the button to make, get every shot. You know, you couldn't just hold it to shoot, which makes Gameplay kind of a pain in the ass and gets your finger really tired really fast, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but, there, I mean, eventually you can get enough of a power-up to fire the shot. So it's okay in that regard. I just wish you it was a little bit easier to, like, control for that. Otherwise, the gameplay is, is highly simplistic, but it's not hard to get your head around. It gets a little frustrating sometimes to know like in certain areas when a bullet's coming at you and how to dodge or avoid it or something because it sometimes it blends into the background like in the horse riding stage that was such a pain in the ass mm -hmm. it gets a little bit of it gets a little be a little bit of a pain here and there but i can't knock it too hard so i think i think three is fair i'm gonna go three uh i had very little fun playing this game Is it more or less because it's, like, boring? Because I don't think it would be because it's too challenging. It's rather simplistic. Yeah, it's repetitive as shit. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> His name is Cormano, not Copacho. Cormano. That doesn't really help, though. That's even, like, it's even more, like, stereotypical. Oh, yeah. Still hardcore. Mm-hmm. Um... No, like that. I think for me, the it would become like I said. But at the issue I just mentioned in the gameplay, that flies into the fun factor too. I think it becomes a little bit too harsh on you for like some decisions you have literally no control over based on how the game itself plays out. And uh, a lot of the times, I find myself I find myself limited in like especially during boss fights to move around. It's not as easy to attack bosses and stuff like that. So I didn't really have as much fun as I thought I would. This is the, if you ever play the arcade version, much better. That's the one you should go with. But, I mean, got to go with uh, consoles here. So, hmm. yeah, no, I, this is rough. Um, two? I, I think two. Two's fair. Uh, as far as challenge goes, it's, it's essentially the one-to-one -one ratio of, how rewarding is 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 the gameplay essentially? And uh, it has no story, but then again, it's an arcade game, so that's not exactly shocking. Um, mm. It's not a genre that I'm particularly into, and you know, it's just it, it it's too much of a rehash of better games that Konami made. So I, I got to give Challenge a two. I wasn't that impressed with it, and I and I wasn't finding myself you know, much of a desire to keep playing after a certain point. Yeah, like, I, it, I tend to, see, I, I'm on the other side of that, but I'm I'm more on the disappointed because I am I like these types of games from mm -hmm. time to time, you know? It's, it's like, my, it's one of my favorite genres, these, like, action arcade type of games, but as I'm playing through it, like, there's nothing about this that feels rewarding to me. There's nothing about this that I feel like, oh, man, I feel so good about beating that boss or... Oh, what if I had done something different? No, this thing's just fucking a slug, just a chore to get through it. So, I gotta be real. I think I'm gonna go lower. I think I might go one, honestly. All right. Well, that gives us a score of uh, hang on. Uh, at eighty. Eleven. Whew. Sorry about that one. <laughs> plus two plus three. Yep. Okay. Just want to double check. Up. Oh, forgot to. Do Maybe you should part. pick the rest of this month because I've been disappointed so far, and and, and uh, I love everything. Yes, but especially with the last two in this month. Who? I am sorry. Well, I'm glad that you acknowledged that it wasn't just games that you're disappointed in. It's your entire existence. 
Well, you're a part of my existence, so should I be disappointed in you too? <laughs> That's not how existences work, my dude. But I appreciate the attempt. <laughs> Let's try. I tried. You did. Tried. You did. You tried to flip it. There's respect there. I mean, you fell flat on your face like a fucking Johnny Knoxville TV show, but I, hey, at least you tried. You wanted to make walk and tall, but, but all you ended up doing was getting kicked in the dick. I ended up making action point instead. <laughs> God. I haven't seen Ugh. that. Oh, I, I, know, I know what movie that is. Never mind. All right, um, so let's let's get into the useless news. Um, but da 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 da. <laughs> your your excitement knows no bounds, sir. It's time for your useless news. Now with your host, Katsu Katrick. and on in game. Digital sports media. Do, 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 do. The Furby lover himself, Chad Porto. Now to the front desk. Not your magic. Do, 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 do. Is that actually true that you actually like Furbies? No. <laughs> I was trying to think of something funny. I, I got a funny title and I, I couldn't think of one, so I was like, fuck it, I'll just say something weird. <laughs> Those things creep me out. But I forgot my name, but thank you anyway for the introduction. Catchu Let's get into Kedrick. that useless news. Catchu Kedrick. Yes. It's a tongue twister, man. You, no, no, you're from the planet Cashew. Because you're next a nut. To <laughs> Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Great, so now I want almond joy. Why? Gross. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> So, hey, you said the commercial jingle, motherfucker. That's on you. Yeah, because the jingle's great. I never said the candy bar was. The PS5's been formally introduced. And it looks like a cybernetic hug. <laughs> is that a good is that a good interpretation? Or are you, is that a like one that's like hor- scares you? I'm not sure how to take it that. It looks like the PS4 put on like an like a Star Wars Sith like jacket. Consumers, I cost over six hundred dollars. What? No, that can't be true. That's impossible. Search your feelings, consumers. You know it to be true. No, no, that's a lie. They told me you killed him. Search your feelings. <laughs> you know it to be true. No! Then he jumps off the fucking thing because he's a goddamn Dorcasaurus Rex. I can just imagine this thing giving you the death grip because you don't want to make uh, pr- make digital purchases on the all-digital console. It's not all-digital. There is an all-digital version, actually. There's well, two versions of noise. the system. I see a... <laughs> I see a a fucking CD port. <laughs> Guess which one Chad's gonna buy when it drops to f- three fifty, four hundred. By the time, and that be, that'll be when it's not relevant anymore. <laughs> you so. Here's the thing about me. Mm-hmm. I one never subscribed to groupthink. I don't do mm-hmm. it. Two, I never follow trends. I'm only now just getting into the GameCube. I mean, let's let's be honest here. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's relevant when I finally get it. You know, I waited a year and a half or so before I got the PS4, and the only reason I got it was because it came with The Last of Us Two and GTA Five, and it was fucking four hundred dollars. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> I can get behind that. <laughs> No, that's a that's a five hundred and fifty dollar value right there. So I was like, all right. So eventually, the PS Five will drop <laughs> below forty two hundred dollars, and I'll finally be able to afford it. <laughs> this thing's gonna. Co- I honestly, I I could see it costing like six fifty. 
Six fifty, really? I, I, I honestly could. Well, like think about it. What was the PS3 first list at? Four hundred, five hundred? I think it was like five hundred. Six hundred, I it was six hundred, I think. I would not be surprised if the PS five was six hundred. If the if the PS3 I, I, started off at I don't think it was six hundred, I think it was five hundred, but like still, like that's gobs of money. Especially when like the PlayStation was like it, it, it's brand new for two hundred dollars, and and now it's been out for five years. It's brand new for a hundred and ninety dollars. Fuck you on that discount. The fucking fuck, man. Like right, the Nintendo was like what two fifty. You're talking about the newest one, the Switch, 64, right? That's what no, talking about. Sixty-four. Sorry, I should have been specific. Okay. 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 Let's see. Uh, inflation. I think it was two hundred actually. Calculator. I think it was two. I remember seeing ads for two fifty, like distinctly. Okay. So let's just let's just go with two fifty or no two twenty five. I'm sorry. That that's what I remember seeing it for is two twenty five. And it came with a game. Let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll say nineteen ninety seven. Uh, I purchased an item for two hundred and twenty five dolores. So that's about three sixty. Give or take, it's three fifty nine forty three, in in modern money. So, you know, PS one and and an N sixty four were you know are about comparable. Mm. So I could ease easily see this thing going for fucking six hundred dollars. All right, so two thousand and what six the the damn uh, PlayStation three came out at. Yes, two thousand six. Launch price. Let's let's see what the let's see what the interweaves have to say. Uh, interweaves. How much did it cost when it came out? It was five ninety nine. So you were right, Matthew. Okay. So we'll say five ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. So inflation wise, if the PS three came out in 06, right? Sake argument. Mm hmm. So at five ninety nine ninety nine in two thousand and six, that would be the equivalent of seven hundred and sixty three dollars today. Whoo! Yeah. So even so, e Ooh, yeah, oh, buddy. So I guess if we're coming in under seven hundred dollars for the PS five, we should be fortunate. <laughs> fuck that noise, man! What the fuck? <sighs> See, the the problem is with the Playstations are they're fucking durable. Uh-huh. Their internet services for their older consoles are, are always working. Like, I'm pretty sure if I update my PS3, I can still use uh, most of the online features. Oh, without question. So, like, you really can't be mad at it. <laughs> <sighs> it it's so it's so steep, though, man. It really it really is like. Well, you also have to remember, though, it's not just a a game console anymore. It's a multi-entertainment console because it's going to come with, like, Pandora and and fucking... um, uh, Like Twitch. uh, Twitch and YouTube. It will be installed on it. Netflix, Amazon, I... Plus whatever it's fucking called. Um, What's the goddamn uh, Spotify? You know, we'll be able to use that on there. You know, it's... Full, it's very full with all of its accessories. So like, I, I really can't be mad at, at, at a price like that. Doesn't mean I'm going to be excited to pay it. No. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to get the first generation. That's for damn sure. I'm I'll gonna tell be- you this much. I make more money than you, and I'm not buying it. <laughs> uh, that's not true. I mean, I, I mean that's not untrue. Um my whole thing is is like I'll probably buy it, but I want to make sure that if I'm putting down six hundred bucks, that I'm getting the second generation when they got all the fucking bugs worked out of it. Because <laughs> that's like, how it you, is. You don't want to experience you don't want to experience red ring shit like prior consoles, man. You don't want to experience that. Well, like you know, PS4, PS3, PS2. Well, that's how much the PS2. But like every console generally has like first generation issues at this point in its cycle. So, like, you don't mm. want to go full bore into a brand new console day one because you don't know what fucking patches and bullshit it's going to need. So, like, I'm, I'm well, going to just look to see if there's any PS2 games still getting released when PS5 comes out, and I'll go play those. <laughs> the truth about it, too, is, like, um, 
especially with console design too, you don't know if there's going to be revisions down the line that uh, improve some of the things that maybe you didn't get with the first wave too. Mm-hmm. Well, plus bundles, which are always the, the big uh, big selling point for me. Mm. You know, I think the last two game consoles I bought were bundles. Bundle, bundle. Oh, and they're milking the shit. They're milking the shit out of GTA Five as far as long as they fucking can with PlayStation consoles, man. <laughs> So I swear to God. Well, one, PlayStation 5 is the most selling game of anything of all time. So, yeah, duh. All right. So, we, we had specs somewhere. I, I, don't, I don't see them here. I don't care. Like, if, you're, if, you, if you sit down and go, uh, well, you know, the Xbox Series 1X or whatever dumb fucking name it has, you, you, it has the refrigerator. <laughs> no, it's not even a fucking refrigerator. It's a goddamn Alexa. Xbox. <laughs> I never thought of that shit. <laughs> Xbox. Tell me which game console I should buy. The PlayStation 5. What? what? <laughs> huh. Are you a waste of money? I can't answer that. <laughs> well, Xbox Live X. Are you a waste of money? I'm sorry. I can't answer questions that would be paradoxical in my environment. If I were to say yes, and that would mean I would have no function or purpose, and that would destroy my programming. That's a long-winded way of saying yes, isn't it? Yup. Fair enough. <laughs> so I don't, I don't give a fuck about the specs. If you give a fuck about the specs, you're fucking dumb. Because the specs will change on the next fucking set of consoles. Because we all know that these aren't going to be the only set of consoles these fucking companies put out. And, and, and you don't it's even know games, if man. these consoles are about. fucking work either. Like, you, oh, could no. get the, you could get the Xbox Series X ring of death. You can get the PS5 slanted vagina dis- destructo disc. I don't know. It, it looks fucking weird. <laughs> I love how you call it a vagina. That's hilarious. It looks like a fucking <laughs> vagina. Which might be why the, I'm you such know, a irony, fan of it. The irony is, is that my girlfriend said the exact same thing to me when she first saw it. It, it, it actually looks like... Uh, did you ever see that Macaulay Culkin library movie? Uh, Page Master, you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, remember, I've seen it. Remember how the books had like, like the weird jackets that made them like more pronounced? Oh my god! It they, looks they, like they a pronounced book. The design for the Page Master, dude. Right? Like fucking Christ. <laughs> so here, here's the here's the games we're getting. Grand Theft Auto Five on its third generation console. That's fucking insane, but. Makes a lot of sense with that franchise. Rockstar's just like, you want Grand Theft Auto 6? Fuck off. We'll see you in 2030, bitches. <laughs> We're milking this bitch as long as we can. Do you just see like the uh, the entire building get on a motorcycle and drive off down the highway to I'm going highway to hell. The, the building's this... wearing sunglasses. There are people inside the windows banging on it violently because they don't know what's happening. I believe if you get the system too, that um, it's supposed to GTA Online is supposed to come free with it. I think or something. I believe that was an offer. I think. I think. Honest to God, I, I I'm under the impression that Grand Theft Auto Five is going to be free from here on out for any new users, because it's free on mm. um, uh, not not Steam. Epic Game Store. Yeah, it, it was free on the Epic Game Store for a while, and it's always mm. it's always free for those PlayStation Plus members. Like it's like it's like the every other month option. Mm. It's like you can either get like Ratchet and Clank two or fucking Resident Evil six or hey for the thirty eighth month in a row, Grand Theft Auto five, because <laughs> the uh, the profitability comes from all the extra perks you can get on online play. Like they're fucking conniving, man. Gotta love them because like you can play the entire experience for free, not for free for free. But, like, you don't need to pay extra for Grand Theft Auto Online. You just need to pay for PlayStation Online. So, mm-hmm. like, you can go in and play online and do all the fun stuff and not have to drop a single dime. But if you want that chrome metallic sports car, 20 bucks or whatever it is. And you're like, all right, yeah, cool, whatever. That's how they get you, man. That's how they get you. Uh, we also got the announcement that Spider-Man Miles Morales, I think this is supposed to be a sequel to the 2018 game. 
There's been a lot of talk of what it's supposed to be. Some people are saying it's like a the original is supposed to get like a remaster, and this is supposed to be like like extra content, kind of like how The Last of Us remastered and added a little bit in the end. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's supposed to be along the same lines as that, maybe. Well, if that's the case, and whatever, I still don't care. <laughs> I was you weren't, not a, you weren't a fan of that game, anyways. No, I was not. I th- I found it to be very meh. So like if you if you're one of those kids that needs your Miles Morales, I'm glad you're getting it, but I'm not going back to that game. And if this is a sequel of sorts, I'm not picking it up because I don't care. I I enjoyed it, and I would like I would personally like to see what they do with the Miles Morales story. And that would that's just me though. I just y- you gave me too much to explore. I felt stifled. Hmm. Plus all the dumb shit you had to do. Whatever. Gran Turismo 7. You know, that game's still around. <laughs> mm, fun. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, it looks like the heroes have found themselves in a universe with collapsing dimensions. Futuric, futuristic cities and dinosaurs. So they're in a Turok game. Okay. Whatever. Actually, I actually like the the mechanic that they're trying to do in that where it keeps pulling them into different dimensions and how it adds to the gameplay and stuff. So I'm I'm relatively interested to see how that one plays out. You would. Project of course. Athea, Square Enix and Luminous Productions premiered a game called Project Athea, which featured werewolf-like creatures and flying sections. It will come exclusively to PS5. I, I didn't watch the launch trailer, so I don't fucking know what it is. is does this look any good? Um, to me, to me, no, not really. To me, it just looks like another stock game that's trying to copy off, like, God of War or something. Anna Purna Interactive revealed a robot-focused game called Strays, an world where humans have died off. Oh, good, it's Wally skipping it. Returnal. Returnal. What? That's dumb. That's not a word. A new franchise from Sony was shown during the event, developed by formerly arcade-focused Horse... House Market... Market? Market? House Marquet. Retinal features a, a uh, Returnal features a uh, crash landing on an alien planet. The protagonist keeps relieving the same events, including the, her death. Over, I don't care. Sackboy, a big adventure. It, this is from Little Big Planet. All right, that's fine. Destruction All Stars, Lucid Games premiered an action sports game called Destruction All Stars during the event, featuring destructible vehicles as well as on foot characters. It looks like a demolition derby taken to the absolute limit. With impressive particle effects <clears throat> and physics, it's a weird idea. Like for a hybrid, like it's it reminds me like of like Rocket League with like a like almost like Overwatch or something because they're like trying to you actually have you get out of the cars and you can still like blow shit up after you get out. You don't just immediately die, so that's kind of weird. Yeah, it sounds like the um, it sounds like the uh, um, fucking Christ. Why well, can't I remember any games names? It's that uh, fucking. It sounds like the Fortnite to the PUBG of racing games. This 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 sounds like the Fortnite to Rocket League's PUBG. Hmm. I can see that. It makes sense. Kena Bridge of Spirits. I'm sorry. If you want me to talk about your game, you need to make it not sound stupid. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> dude! You are not a person to show anything new to, especially with names like Jesus Christ. No, I just I'm aware of how these fucking games go and, and like what they're trying to do and who they're trying to cater to and fuck off. <laughs> like what what is this volcano high bullshit? Like why are we marketing furries to children? That I do not know. That is strange. Like they're all like fucking furries. Fuck that dude. Fuck the fuck the PlayStation Five. I was gonna call it the Nintendo Five. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oddworld Soulstorm was shown during the event. The game has been in development for years and will now release up on PS Five. However, the new technology hasn't compromised the series' classic character designs or sense of humor. I've never played Oddworld. I don't really care. But hey, I'm sure Cat is gonna be happy about that one. That's exactly what I was just going to fucking say. Ghostwire <laughs> Tokyo. Have voted for that. This seems interesting. 
Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, Bethesda and Tango. All right, you already got me hooked. I love the name. Tango Game Works. Love it. Gave us a look at Ghostwire Tokyo, which was first shown in E3 2019 in a memorable unveiling. No, it wasn't, because I don't remember it, so fuck you, you lying sack of shit. We saw our first look at gameplay this time, including a look at all the twists and changing world overrun with spirits. The game is a first person. Ah, you lost me. First person kills you? Really? Yep. It, it's it's, uh, a, it's yeah. a vastly overly saturated market. It's going to be a, I had with a it. VR thing. I know it. It's, it's going to be a VR thing. I think the biggest issue I had, too, was when it was initially revealed, the trailer that they had that I saw. Just, like, nothing but just straight-up action. It seems like they changed tone in development already. So, I don't know. It threw me off. Godfall, first shown several months ago, was demonstrated again during this event. It features intense melee combat using a variety of weapons, as well as supernatural and science fiction elements. You'll be able to unlock godlike armor to defeat powerful foes. It will be out this holiday season. So is the PS5 going to be out this holiday season? It is aiming for a holiday 2020 release. That's what they keep saying. So we'll see if it holds true. Solar Ash. Boy, that solar's got a nice ash. From the creators of Hyperlink Drive was announced for the PS5. The hostile world seems to reject the protagonist. And there are mentions of a void. Oh, God, I can't even finish reading that. That sounds so dumb. Well, the thing I hate about that trailer, too, is, like, a lot of these, they're saying there's a lot of gameplay here. That one showed, like, 10 seconds of them running down a hall, and then there's your trailer. Like, that doesn't really get me intrigued by a game. So, showed more fast. than Hitman 3. <laughs> Which was nothing. <laughs> by the by, if you are a video game developer, have mm -hmm. the common goddamn decency to always name your games numbered or never numbered. Because this isn't Hitman 3. This is like Hitman 18. You lying sack yeah, of shit. The, they, yeah, they've, they changed it recently, too. Like, Because I remember there was like Hitman 1, 2, and then they started like going off by names. Wasn't there like Absolution, Blood Money, and stuff like that, right? Yeah, blood now they're going back to numbers ways. again. It will it's conclude the rebooted trilogy. Whatever. Astro's Playroom, a new game, Astro game, a new... Astro Game was shown during the event called Astro's Playroom, and it has been developed by a Japan studio, but only briefly a glimpse of gameplay was shown. Little Devil Inside. All right, you have me so far. An adventure game with a unique aesthetic, as well as plenty of mystical creatures. Level Devil Inside features a mix of stealthy exploration, direct combat, and even hunting wild creatures like dragons. Fuck dragons, I'm down. There will be numerous settings, including mm. frozen tundras and cities. So it seems like you're actually intrigued by something. Yeah. Animation doesn't suck. <laughs> kind of makes me think like we're going to mm -hmm. be chilling with the penguins from Madagascar. Just smile and wave. They're actually boys. pretty cool, Just man. smile and wave. Uh, I might actually play this. Here, we have some images of the characters. If we can actually get it to load properly. That will be the question. You get an old dude with a giant sniper rifle, this creepy dude with a, with a hat. The main hero seems to be a dude with a scarf and a sword. Great, he's that ninja guy. And there's a boar that has a single-eyed riding monster on it. I'm in. You sold me. NBA 2K21. Sounds cool to me, man. Got a new trailer, and like the whole, like, this was the whole selling. You can see Zion Williams sweat. Oh, what is with these games and sweat mechanics? What is this like? That's our new feature: more sweat. <laughs> I can't even make fun of you. That's actually kind of funny. Now with more sweat. Do you remember the WWE action figures back in the day? Like ninety nine. Oh god. You were probably fourteen. Which one was that? Yeah, which one was that? Uh, well, around ninety nine, they started putting out these like jacked up, uh, jack specific figures, and like mm. ninety nine, two thousand, they introduced uh, a series of. Um, giant ass fucking creepy wrestling action figures that were like huge, like ridiculously huge, and they were called like okay. sweat creep, like sweat wrestlers or something like that. Like you could stick like a like a little squeeze bottle on their back, pump it full of water, and like you could see sweat drip from its head. It was fucking weird. Wow, wow, yeah. that's a weird way of doing it, man. Yeah, what the it's, fuck? This is not good. Bug snacks, a charming game. 
I'm sorry, but when you when you start off by saying a charming game, you might as well just say a game that doesn't have a lot of looks, but is really fun. And like, if you gave it a chance, you might really be you know into it. All right, no, I get it. Ugh. Whatever. Bugs it's more like snacks. it looked more like a kids game, honestly. That's what it looks mm. like. Good for, for good for the kids. Demon Souls. It's getting a remake. Deathloop. Arcane Studios presented this game, Deathloop, during the event, which was first shown at E3. Assassins are engaged in an ongoing duel. Oh, okay, so it's Assassin's Creed. No, it's it's from one of your tired uh, uh, genres here, first person, so I don't know about that. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to the one that everyone wants to talk about. But we'll get to that one last. Horizon Forbidden West, a, a fucking sequel, I guess, to Horizon Zero Dawn. Whoop-de-doo. Yeah. yeah, it's one of their bigger franchises out now that they're trying to get something out of, so people are excited yeah. for it. I did like the first one, but I still haven't finished it, and when I do, maybe I'll check this one out. Uh, Pragmata. I don't even know what the fuck this is. Your space the, man? If I'm, yeah, the weirdest one about that is they're showcasing something in 2020 that doesn't come out until 2022. If I, I remember, remember that's the trailer that said that. Mm. Uh, and then we have, of course, the big one that everyone was talking about. Resident Evil Village, a.k.a. Resident Evil 8, a.k.a. Chad going to sit this one out hardcore, homies. It turns you off that much, huh? Well, what is it, Matt? Come on, you I don't can know say how it. to. Well, I don't know what the. I don't know what I'm supposed to answer here. That's supposed to get you upset about the like werewolves, about the nope. returning the ca- returning characters. What nope. is it that bothers you? No, nope. come on, you you can do this. What is Resident Evil as a game? A what? Survival horror? Nope. A. Come on. Think about what Resident Evil Village is. A first person. Okay, yeah. First person shooter. Yeah. It's not a first person shooter, it's a first person survival horror. Mm -hmm. First person games suck nuts. Stop it. I am not going to buy your fucking VR console. You can't make me. I will fucking go back to this goddamn fucking. PS2 GameCube before I go and buy a goddamn stupid ass VR headset. It ain't happening, bitches. That's why they're doing it. I, I guess for you, it'd be like, call me when the next remake comes out in third person. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Call me when Resident Evil 4 comes out. Because I ain't playing these first person bullshit games. I ain't playing these fucking hack at. Dude, Resident Evil 7 was so goddamn boring. Hmm. You fought, like, the same monster every goddamn scenario. And was this the first one that did, like, did yes. a first-person perspective? Okay. It wasn't even good. Ah, oh, what a hack-ass game. Disappoint- disappointing to hear, right, from the, like, future of this franchise. Disappointing. Fucking the future of the franchise is Resident Evil 4 Remake. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm sitting, going, side step. I'm sitting here going, la, 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 la. I can't hear you, la, 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 la. I can't hear you, Yeah, but you, there's la, werewolves, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm fine with the werewolves. <laughs> like, what? We're supposed to pretend that fucking uh, giant s- spiders and giant snakes, th- that's normal. But in a world where people can turn into giant mutated freaks, the idea of crossing genes and turning someone into a werewolf, that's where the line is? How high are you people? By the by, we already knew this was going to happen. The leaks about what this game entails has been out for months at this point. I was say I told you I'd sent this story to you what like at least a month ago, right? Oh, at least that. Well, I read about the uh the witch in the werewolf being involved in this game probably back in October. Hmm. So Damn. like it, it wasn't even that like I wasn't surprised. Like we've known about these leaks. 
I just, I just fucking hate first person. Ugh. It's the worst. I have mi- I have mixed feelings on games like that. I've been okay with some shooters over the years, but I haven't played a ton of them to like. Well, like say Call I really of Duty's fine. That much mm-hmm. Like that's fine because it's it's what it was. You know, it's always been a first person game. But when you're doing third person survival horror for all these years, and then you can find a way to make sure that the game is completely even more unaffordable with VR attachments, yeah, I'm gonna be fucking pissed about it. I think where I really got lost in terms of first person stuff was when that game Mirror's Edge was shown off and I actually tried playing that. That one that's when I was like, okay, I'm out with first person cuz this idea just does not work well with a first person view. It's just going to make me dizzy and want to puke. It's just blah. All right. So, that's 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 that's, that's the a, thing. Not, not, con- a, not a whole lot that impressed you at all, huh? Nope. Except for the uh, PlayStation uh, console that needs to hug you to survive. Nintendo has confirmed that 140,000 users uh, were illegally accessed. Yeah, more. It, this was in. Um, this is an update to the previous one that we had that said 106. Only 160 were. This was an additional amount of these were uh, hacked as well. And this was had a whole do with that whole two step verification thing again. That's what I, this was. I fucking told you, man. Like this story's not done. Or there's gonna be plenty more. Would you be surprised if it got like up to possibly like half a million, million maybe? I wouldn't be surprised if it was everyone. Get the verification, bitches. It ain't hard. Please. <laughs> Don't put your fucking information on your digital consoles. It ain't hard. So this one's confusing. Stadia has apologized for brief- briefly making an unreleased Ubisoft game available to play. I would be yeah, because this was supposed to... for making it not available. <laughs> because we would want to play it on Stadia to begin with. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, the, well, the truth of the matter is, is this game was is still like I don't know if it's in early development or kind of like in mid development, but this was supposed to be one of um, Ubisoft's like big like titles that they're supposed to release within the next like you know next like six months a year or so. One of the big things they're working on, and the pre build just got they just shoved it out the door early. I don't know how something like that can actually like actually happen from somebody. On, like unless you get the go ahead somehow, or unless it was just an error, but now they had to apologize. They had to apologize for it, and I think the one of the things that was craziest about it was people were saying it's like Ubisoft was just directly copying Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like the, the game felt exactly the same. Well, like oh. who the fuck cares? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, Call of Duty. I'm not Metal saying. Honor, I'm not saying it's a big deal. I'm just saying what it Grand, is. Gran you know? Gran Turismo and and fucking. Need for speed, like they're like, come on, fuck off. How's that right? Fucking hacky ass comments, but fucking Stadia's dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> Google is terrible on everything. Came out of it. <laughs> like, the only thing okay. Google's good for is, is selling your information on, online to third party users. Fuck off. Google, you the moment they tried to do streaming, that was just the dumbest thing they could possibly think of. Hey, pay this amount of money every month. or, And on top of that, pay to buy the games. And here's a shitty controller. Have at it, people. That's not even the worst thing they've done. There's the Google oh, Glasses. True. There's uh, Google oh, buying God. YouTube and how much of a disaster that has been. Oh, my God. Please, Google, just stop. Please remember, stop. Remember when Fisher was like, Google's the best. No, it's not Fisher. It's no. the no, best. Dude. They totally don't to augment the ratings on their searches so you can always find what you need. No, it's been proven Google suppresses image uh, uh, searches. Uh, no, they don't. Dude, where's that? Ask Jeeves when you need him. <laughs> Shit. Ask Jeeves is offensive, and we got rid of it. <laughs> you can always use MSN search engine. Da, 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 da. Uh, Chernobyl director will helm the Last of Us TV series pilot. Oh, cool. Don't give a fuck. 
UK government has called for evidence <laughs> loot boxes should be classified as gambling. Uh, how is this oh, still a good. story? I think it's because they're trying to. Well, let me find. Let me get this up here. I'm bring this up. Um, it's obviously gambling. If you don't know what you're buying, it's gambling. And it could be banned from sale to children. Let's see. After the department launched a fresh call for evidence, that's what I'm kind of tired of when I see the stuff is that how are you trying to call for more evidence when all you need to do is look up a shit, look up a YouTube subscribe to. They'll tell you it directly. Like there's evidence all over the place. Look at the, the storefronts for every one of these. What more proof do you need? Why do you have to dilly dally around all of it? Uh, so, <laughs> review of Last of Us 2 is Naughty Dog's greatest game. Uh, I doubt that. Uh, Day Z creator Dan he- Dean Hall is on his next game, Icarus. Uh, that's so pretentious. Let's see. There was a story that came out, like, right, right before we started. I don't know if you really want to talk about it or not but it had to do with um warner brothers um wanting to no. sell off a bunch of their games or something saw it don't care activision ea are okay. reportedly in discussions to buy mortal Kombat and rock studies parent that stemmed from the warner brothers sales uh star wars five memes okay let's go with that let's see what we got there uh that looks about it so Let's see what we got for the memes. Nintendo Switch toaster, PS5 router, Xbox Series X fridge. Yeah, I could see that. <clears throat> I keep telling everyone that the PS5 literally just looks like my old PlayStation 2 in a white folder. No, it doesn't. That's right, kid. Um, that's a dumb meme. So that's supposed to be, I think, uh, Saudi Arabia <clears throat> or uh, not Saudi Arabia, um, Abu Dhabi. The duck bill one, that one works. I like that one. Uh, cat in a I think b- someone had it like as a wireless router or something. Yeah, I think cat, cat, cat in a box. That, that's pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> they posted a photo what of, the uh, fuck? Uh, of the two robots from... Wally, that's great. Uh, PS5 next oh, to an Xbox. Oh, nice. The I PS- that. That's cool. The PS5 has uh, um, Sar- uh, the Eye of uh, Mordor. Mount Doom. Love it. <laughs> PS5 okay. has a Pope's hat. All right. PS5 looks like a coffee machine. I, I mean, you're stretching on that one there, kid. Uh, the Virgin Router versus the Chad PS5. Fair enough. Uh, the new PS5 looks like a router. What the fuck is this? And then it's just photos of the Xbox Series X looking like dumb shit. So, yeah, was, I guess video game dorks aren't really good at memes anymore, huh? Doesn't really doesn't really seem like a no because I'm honestly the more you talk about it, I'm on board with your whole that thing is just another uh, vessel for to be see it more as now. Oh, what was that you cut out? I said that um. I see that I see that being more of I believe what you're saying more about the Series X than people saying it being a fridge or something. I think of it more as the Alexa device now based on what you're telling me. I mean basically. Alexa mm. device. Let's see if let's see how right I am about that. A square Alexa device. Cause Alexa is a s- Cylinder. I'm pretty sure there's a square device. What do we got here? Alexa. There, there is there. Like device? there is one, but it doesn't. It there isn't like there isn't there is one, but it's not tall. It's wide. Like it, it is a square sort of, but it's not like it doesn't look anything like the Xbox Series X. Smart speakers. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Uh, most of them are round. Hmm. You whores, you whores, 
you whores. You had to ruin the bed. Alexa, call Google and tell them to go fuck themselves. So, Matt, what do we, uh, what, what do we got here on the, on the YouTube fronts? Um, let's see. Let's check out the YouTube updates for the week. I've been seeing your screen. It looks like a lot of pretty much all wrestling updates as far as your side goes, it looks like. At least in the beginning there. Um, let's see. Well, I'll start. Uh, Russell Gaming is late to the, uh, to the party. They posted a video on Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins being in, in the game. Retromania. Mm. Um, that was announced like a week and a half ago, so they're kind of late on that one. Uh, Man of the Jedi did a great uh, follow-up video to uh, 13 Reasons Why Season 4 is Insane. Uh, technically, just why Season 4 is in- insane. There's not 13 reasons. It's just fucking terrible. Uh, and mm-hmm. she, I, I haven't seen it, but just watching her video on it, like, yeah, I can see that it's completely batshit crazy. Uh, Matt McMuscles posted a video this morning. Street Fighter X Tekken Wahapong. And I'll say this, all of his fucking stories are always the same. Money. Time constraints. I don't even need to fucking watch the video to know that it was probably under budget. Or probably cost too much. Or had too much of an exaggerated date in which to be pushed out the door by. He's fucking hitting the same goddamn notes with every one of these videos. I know it's not his fault, but like, come on. He's not really doing anything to spice it up is what you're saying, pretty much. No. What I said is what I said. These fucking videos okay. are always the same goddamn stories. Well, we were, we were over budget. Every time. They were over so budget. tired of the same old, same old then. Yeah, find, find me a fucking... Stop letting morons select your videos for you, Matt. Like, go and find <laughs> stories where, like, yeah, we were going to do this game called, like, Tubular Total Wipeout. But, like, a sinkhole opened up in our studios and ate half our development staff. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story I want to hear about. I don't want to hear about all these same fucking stories from all these same fucking publishers with all the same fucking details. Oh, are you telling me you did another Capcom video? And are you telling me that Capcom decided that they were going to put out a game that they couldn't afford to make and rush it out the door and put a lot of bunch of bullshit in there to make you pay for more? What? It's almost like you're expecting me to hear something different every time you do a Capcom story. It's like saying, hey, did you hear that story on the news with the lion and and the lion tamer at the zoo? Did the lion eat the lion tamer? How'd you know? Because you don't ever bring up the story about the lion who didn't eat the guy. (laughs) It's not news at that point. No, it's just today or yesterday or tomorrow until he gets eaten, in which case then it's news. Like, that's, that's what he's doing. He's making the fucking video where the lion doesn't eat the lion tamer. We know. We fucking know. Of course we fucking know. We've watched at least two of your videos. We know. At least when, with, like, the, uh, um, I don't even, he didn't even do it. It was, uh, uh, uh Stop Skeleton from Fighting did the, uh, video on why, uh, um, not the Mega Man, uh, what's the fucking, Mighty Number no. 9. He did a video on why Mighty Number no. 9 didn't didn't work and at least that was interesting because it wasn't just oh they were over budget and they were rushed out the door and they were given a bunch of add-ons to recoup costs like fucking every time man you actually did two capcom videos this week too did you happen to watch the other one or no let me guess it was a video about a game that was over budget and rushed out the door and was hanky and didn't really appease the audience um, it had to do about five games that were supposed to be the five that uh, Capcom were pushing to release on the GameCube. Oh, Stop Skeletons for Fighting already did a video on that. Yeah. Like, like a while ago. I thought, I, thought, I thought so. I thought that's why it looked so familiar when I was watching. I'm like, wait, I think I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, it was like v- Beautiful Joe was one. Mm-hmm. That's the only one I cared about. <laughs> Uh, Sci-Fi Wire posted a video uh, on yesterday's Enterprise, one of the better episodes in Star Trek Next Generation history. Uh, the guy who played Shooter McGavin in, um, what's that movie? Happy Gilmore. Mm. He plays the commander of 
the third Enterprise. Now, I, I, you're not going to know this. I, I don't expect you to. What, have you ever seen Next Generation, Star Trek Next Generation, or like any of the movies? I've seen the show, but if you're asking me like a specific no, question no, no, within no. the show, no. I won't know it. No. Uh, so the sh- ship you saw was the fourth ge- uh, version of the Starship Enterprise. Okay. The TV series Star Trek Enterprise shows you the first ship. Uh, the okay. movies that came out with Shatner and like that TV series was the second version of the ship. In yesterday's Enterprise, they showed you the third version of that ship and, and what happened to it. And it was a really cool story. And Shooter yeah. McGavin actually ends up playing a really heroic, really likable dude, even though he's fucking Shooter McGavin and he's always the villain in everything he plays. <laughs> so it's like a bridging the gap type of story then? Yeah, yeah this that's right? exactly what it is. Okay. It's, it's a really good episode. And the thing with Star Trek, uh, at least a lot of Star Trek, you don't need to watch like season one, episode one to watch se- season three, episode eight. Pretty much. So the- a lot of them are all are like contained stories. Then mm-hmm. yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Like they'll put in like little details of like things that may have happened in like previous seasons. Like uh, the Romulans have crossed the border. You don't need to know what else happened. Like you were just told the Romulans crossed the border. <laughs> like you're good. You're caught up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the leaderboard posted an entire video on the complete Last of Us timeline, and they had my girl do it. I appreciate that, Sydney. I love you. Uh, they actually did some stuff from the comics. There's apparently a comic I didn't know about, or maybe it was a manga. I don't fucking know. And so they filled in some gaps that even I didn't know about. I was like, oh, cool. So that was, that was a, a wonderful experience. Let's see. Uh... Come on, load faster. Let's see. Uh, super into the um, skeleton, not the skeletons, the um, squirrel and robot podcast that Ill Will Press has been doing. Um, mm. It's just fucking dorky and as hell. I love it. Um, I, w- I would advise everyone to go check that. They're only like 10 minutes long, and they're up on YouTube, and, and they're just a lot of fun. <laughs> I think people would get a uh, mm. get, get a real kick out of them. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's about it for me. I'm gonna keep scrolling. What 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 do you watch? Um, I watched a few, I watched a few things this week. Um, it's been an interesting week with some of the YouTubers I watched. Uh, one of the main channels I've been watching for a long time. He's uh, been a fair fairly like heavy. Nintendo Switch supporter over the years. Um, at least, yeah, ever since that launched, he's been all about it. That's uh, Beat 'em Ups. He uh, did a video this week that was kind of different from his separate ones, and it was Nintendo. Nintendo had this like ambassador press program thing for you know people that were influencers for the program, and he got let go from it, and he was just kind of like it caught him off guard. But what he was basically saying is like. My channel didn't really get here because of anything Nintendo directly did for me. Like, even in that program over the years, all they gave him were, like, five games. So it was a useless thing to him, really. So it, he was he was trying not to be a dick about it, but he was just saying, like, look, it doesn't change anything. So And then there was a ton of people that I watched did did, like, their experiences with this whole thing, too. So it was a strange week as far as that goes, but... Um, Let's see, as far as other ones, uh, Slopes Game Room did uh, an interesting video about a successor to Techno Super Bowl, which I didn't even know. I didn't even know was a thing. And uh, another review on this upcoming system, which I'm looking at, forward to, the Evercade. I got that ordered. I want to get that soon. What is that? And uh, the Evercade is a is a handheld a handheld console that has is uh, basically relies on physical media and it incorporates a lot of like older retro games that they've gotten the license to and some like newer indie like indie titles and stuff like that so and it's only like it's like eight, it costs like 80 bucks and you do get a game with it and most of the games on the packs are like they range anywhere from like maybe 10 to 20 games in each pack and they're only about like 15 20 bucks a piece so they're they're filling like a nice niche uh, there, I think. 
and that's what kind of got me interested in it. But should uh, happen in the next couple weeks, and I'll play it from there. I'm not digging the design of it. It looks like one of those uh, Nintendo. What the fuck were those called? Like a Nintendo Mini. A mini? Is that what I'm thinking of? Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it looks like um. <clears throat> to me, it looks like a PS, like a Sony PSP without the little circle nub. Looks like to me. Mm. Hang on, let me see. If I can can't find it. Mini Game Boy. It looks like the. I found the I found it like right off the bat. I just don't know what it's called. Um, mm. The Verge, Micro, the Nintendo Micro. Oh, the Micro. Yeah. Mm. Silver. That two was buttons. a strange. That was a strange little anomaly. Count. Kind of, yeah. That, that's what. That. That's kind of what I. It, this reminds me of, but with like uh, 1989 aesthetics. Hmm. <laughs> So far from everything people are have been hearing about it, it's a good system, and they're they're doing support for like like I said, support for any developers trying to release like physical cartridges out for all of them. So I, I'm down for whatever franchises they can seem to pick up, man. I'm always down for new idea uh, ideas like this. I think it's interesting. So we'll have to see where it, uh, if it's actually any good or not, though. That's can, the ultimate question. Can plug into your TV? I dig that. They got collections, mm-hmm. so they got the Atari collection number one with Ninja mm-hmm. Golf. All right. <laughs> uh, Interplay collection, Clay Fighters, Earthworm Jim, Earthworm Jim, he's such a super guy. Uh, Vivin, I can't pronounce that. Uh, Namco with Pac-Man, Atari collection two with Planet Smashers. Uh, Interplay collection two with Earthworm Jim 2. Uh Prehistoric Man, uh, Namco Collection 2 with uh, Slaughterhouse, Galaga. There's a, there's a Technos Collection, I believe. Yeah, it's just, I just got there. A Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, River City Ransom. That, the Crash in the Boys, that's where the money is right there. DC mm. Data East Collection with Burger Time, Sides Pocket, Bad Dudes. Mega Cat Studios Collection Coffee. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, well, don't don't let that deter you. There's a lot of other good things out there. Collection with uh, Magic Warrior. Top Racer. I remember Top Racer. I remember, Matt, do you remember when there was a, a game, like a, uh, a toy store at um, in Middleburg Heights at um, where that giant eagle is now? Oh, shit, yeah, I think I do. I just don't remember the name. It wasn't a Toys R Us or a KB Toys, but I remember going there a lot because that's where I got my Pirates of Dark Water action figures. And the one game I always remember seeing was Top Racer because every time I saw it, I thought it was motherfucking goddamn uh, uh, Knight Rider. And I got so excited. I was like, yeah. And then I'd go up and I was like, oh, never mind. Radical Rex, that's that's what we're doing next week. We're reviewing Radical Rex. I don't know what it is. But it's a dinosaur on a skateboard. <laughs> well, here's the thing about Pico 2 is that not all of their stuff is like games you've known either. A lot of the stuff is like games that are not fin- that haven't really been finished and they actually take the games and finish up the rest of it and Radical and do Radical. give the profits to those people. Radical Rex was already made. It's out on the SNES. We're playing it. That's that's tomorrow's. That's that's Saturday's game. Okay, I haven't played it. I'll fi- we'll figure out what it is. I guess <laughs> it's a fucking dinosaur on a fucking skateboard. Like what? <laughs> I hope it's rad. I hope I sure hope it's radical. Radical, radical, <laughs> radical, radical. <laughs> Hey, look at this fucking screen. Oh, nice. I'm, 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 oh, I love it. Radical, 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 radical. He's, he's on a fucking skateboard. There's, there's, oh, I love this game already. This game better not disappoint. <laughs> this is something that I would totally be into. I don't like the aesthetics. Like, they, they're obviously going for 80 styling in box art, so I get what they're going for. It's just not something that appeals mm-hmm. to me aesthetically, but that doesn't mean I, I, 
you know, if this gets good reviews with the games it's getting, like, this is exactly the kind of thing that, you know, I've always pitched to you. Like, we should totally just make a mm. retro console that, you know, is only physical media. Mm -hmm. Fucking That's exactly going. what they went for here. Yeah. It's only 80 bucks. The prices uh, for the consoles or for the cartridges started around 20 bucks so like that. You know. Got well, here's the thing, too. If you want to go with the 80 bucks, you get one. But if you go with there's a premium one and that's like 100, but you get like three cartridges, I believe. So for 100? It just depends on what you want. Yeah. If I can get the. Uh, which, which, which ones would I get? I'd probably get. I would definitely get Technos. I would probably get Picos because it. Medical Rex, I mean, like, come on. Um, <laughs> what is that? Nightshade? Oh, God, I remember Nightshade. And I'd probably go with <laughs> either in Interplay Collection 1 or Interplay Collection 2. Probably Interplay Collection 2. Okay, to my knowledge, I believe the premium collection itself, um, the three things are, those are three that are pre-selected. I believe it's like an Atari one, Interplay, and Data East. I believe those are the three initially yet. Well, I'm not um, going to buy those. Well, what I'm saying is, um, if I honestly just buy the one that, buy the original version that comes with one and just pick another one from the whole list there and you should be fine, you know? Okay. I'm just gonna to each it, their own. If the console's any good, I'll buy the, mm. the, the you know that console with the one game, and then I'll fucking get the other two games. I don't care. I'll I'll pay fucking hundred and twenty dollars. I don't give a fuck. It's, um, a, it's a solid concept. I like it. Lynn Kara atop the fourth wall posted a great video called Z Zayu Rangers. Now you know who the Power Rangers. Yes, I do. You watched them as a kid, right? Go, go, Power Rangers. Yeah, at least the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like when that was a thing, yeah. I watched up until the end of Zio. Well, that series was based off of a Japanese series called Zayu Rangers. And Linkara hmm. reviewed the Japanese Power Rangers TV show Zayu Rangers and the death of their green... Power Ranger. Hmm. And you could like literally see the shots they took from Zayu Rangers and used in Power Rangers in this review, and I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Their Green Ranger doesn't come back, though, unlike ours. <laughs> <laughs> no bait and switch, right? Yeah. You know, Sage Northcutt does a review on the Karate Kid. That was pretty cool. Got to watch uh, one championships YouTube video, though, to see that. Uh, Sci-Fi Wire did an entire video on Freakazoid, everything you didn't know. Oh, nice. Freakazoid is an awesome show. So I knew Bruce Tim had an influence on the show because, like, the styling of the characters. But I didn't yeah. know that Bruce Tim essentially left the show because um, it was either Spielberg or someone else decided that they wanted to go into a more comedic route. And that was just uh -huh. something that Bruce Tim didn't want to do. Huh. So he ends up leaving the series like three or four days into the production of it. Damn. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, see, this wow. is this is doing it right, Matt McMuscles. Find s stuff that talks about things that aren't common. Mm -hmm. They also talk about why it was canceled. You know, they, they go in depth with, you know, the characters and the actors and all. It's, it's really good. I, I liked it. It was re real good stuff. Freak out. Now, let's see. Anything <laughs> else? Um, um, Foamy the Squirrel talks about g dude being a gender neutral term. Check it out because he don't give a fuck. The punk rock NBA covered the new metal fashion trend of the late 90s, early 2000s. It was not good. Like, the video is great, but the fashion was not good. <laughs> oh, God. That had to have been hard for him to go through. Uh, I think that's about it on my end. What about you? Okay. Anything left? Yeah, well, let's see. Um, I, got a, I got a couple of videos left here. Um, 
There was one interesting one. Um, I watched a channel called Metal Jesus Rocks, and he did a video called 16 Modern Updates of Classic Arcade Games. I thought that was interesting to see modern takes on these things, and some of them actually ended up being better than like the originals in certain ways, but some of them actually were worse, so I thought that was a pretty good video. Um, pro- probably my highlight for this week was Scott the Waz's video on uh, game show games and just how, like, fucking irrelevant some of these games are and i think my favorite thing that he did was um he was playing oh was it family feud and he the question came up of like uh how do you propose what do you say when you propose to somebody and he kept saying like ask again later um i don't know can you who are you and that just that that was i thought it was funny but that was a good one and let's see other than that the biggest one to me was Seeing the uh, RetroSoft talk about the uh, story mode for RetroMania and then uh, doing the updates on the referees, I was more intrigued by the story mode, especially how the animation plays out. I think it's pretty cool, and I, I want to see where they uh, where they actually take that because I I'm always intrigued by a story mode, and especially in a game like this, I want to see where that how that plays out. But other than that, I'd say that's it. So with all that being said, I guess we're done for the day. We'll be back next week to talk about Radical Rex. Radical, Radical. Uh, find us at the website, realnerdcorp.com. R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We record live every Saturday at twitch.tv backslash comic and game core. You can come join us there. Uh, we're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. On Instagram at realnerdcorp. R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. Uh, we're on YouTube by searching comic and game core. Uh, we're also on Podbean at realnerdcorp.podbean.com, or you can download the Podbean app to your mobile device and search for Real Nerd Corp through that method. We're also on Spotify and iTunes by searching for Nerd Corp, N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. Uh, Matt, what are your personals? You can find me on Twitch at mnerdcorp, same on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Chad Nerdcorp, C-H-E-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. I love my new profile photo and my new uh, banner name. Don't tell anyone (laughs) what it is. Just go experience it for yourself. I'm also on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut, C-H-E-D-S-P-H-O-T-O-H-U-D. Yep, nope, that's not right. There's no D in that. uh, C-H-E-D-S-P-H-O-T-O-H-U-T. Chad's Photo Hud. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Someone's tired. <laughs> I. Oh, did you know gaming did a uh, how Capcom failed with Dead Rising 5? It's a long-ass video, and I lost interest in it, but maybe you won't. Uh, don't do well with the long ones, man. Don't do well. You don't do well with much of anything. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. What was that fucking mini console called? The, the Ever Drive? The Evercade? Evercade, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, just fixing the, uh, the the run sheet. All right, so with all that said, Matt, why don't you uh, say, say goodnight to all the wonderful people. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and we will catch you next week where we'll be doing something radical, radical.